Hello and welcome to another JavaScript SEO office hours today at this beautiful, sunny, yet a little cold uh, March 24th, 2021. My name is Martin Splitt. I'm a developer advocate at the uh, search relations team here at Google. And um, I'm here to answer your questions. So let's start with the questions that were submitted under the YouTube post for these office hours. Uh, first question comes from Ralph Metzler. Hold on, I'll just quickly let someone in who wants to join as well. Uh, Ralph Metzler is asking, does Google only consider initial page loadings when it comes to Core Web Vitals, or will it use uh, consecutive loadings as well in the statistics? As far as I'm aware, also consecutive page loads will be part of the uh, Core Web Vitals statistics. Um, it's unclear how exactly we are going to use them when it comes to uh, the page experience signal. A bunch of details are still being worked out. But in general, I would assume that uh, also the uh, consecutive page loads are counted as well. Then we have a question from Andrew Berg. Uh, if I have links in raw HTML, but they are not present in the rendered HTML, will Google still crawl them properly? That's a clunky CMS navigation question, apparently. Um, in general, the more robust things are, the better, which means there should not be a discrepancy in, in uh, between crawled HTML and the rendered HTML, which means it's fine to add things. It's also hypothetically fine to remove things. But then what is the one that you want us to see? Unclear. The good news is it probably still works. I would just not rely on it, but it probably still works because we are looking at the initial HTML to extract URLs for crawling. Uh, so we probably do see these URLs already and then are able to figure out the structure. It might also be that because someone commented on like, yeah, it seems to be that way. Uh, that could also be because of the sitemap that you submit. But in general, I would expect this to work, even though I do say do not uh, rely on this, because that is a detail that might change in the future. Um, but uh, as far as I'm aware, as of today, that should work. I would still argue it is better to be consistent. So if there are things in the initial HTML that you want to be taken care of or you want to be taken into account, they should also be in the rendered HTML. Removing things from the rendered HTML might mean we might not see that in the indexing infrastructure. Um, in this specific case, because it's about the links, it should still work because we do link extraction uh, twice. We do it in the rendered HTML as well as in the initial HTML. But again, implementation detail. OK, so thanks uh, to those two for submitting questions uh, through the YouTube thread. Um, now you get the opportunity to ask questions live for those who are live here. Uh, and I think there's already one in the uh, chat, which is nice. You, you can uh, unmute yourself and uh, talk to me afterwards. There should be also a raise hand button at the, at the lower um, menu bar where you have all the different bits and pieces that you can use to raise your hands so that you don't like have to worry to actually speak in uh, if someone else is speaking right now. So Yannick is asking, is there anything that speaks against the use of server-side rendering? Can you recommend this type of pre-rendering for future projects? Uh, there's nothing that speaks against using server-side rendering. In fact, it might actually make things faster for your users. It definitely makes things more robust. Um, there's nothing per se that is bad about server-side rendering. Just make sure that you implement it properly so that it doesn't come to any weird side effects. Um, I can definitely recommend that uh, for future projects. I think if you are starting a project anew, it is the best and easiest moment to actually um, to actually get uh, that implemented because retrofitting that onto uh, projects that are already in progress is a relatively hard ask. So yeah, I would recommend that for the future projects. Um, there's nothing that speaks against server set rendering. And now I see that Dave raised his hand. Hi, Dave. Hi, uh, you're right. Uh, yeah, uh, I was having a robust discussion uh, with some developers. Um, it's around, uh, they've got a framework that server side renders and hydrates. And uh, like a lot of them, that provides, that puts most of the content in a big JSON string kind of thing mm. at the bottom. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I don't necessarily see it as a problem at all, um, but they're obsessed with stripping this out for Google um, and other bots. Uh, they're saying, yeah, oh, it'll save loads of page weight and all this kind of stuff. To me, it seems like a lot of fragility and uh, problems, but um, potentially. But is there any benefit from doing that? Is there any benefit from removing it? I wouldn't imagine it would be a problem if it wasn't there. Um, yeah. I, I think you're right there. Uh, I don't think it's a problem to have that huge JSON string at the bottom, um, particularly because it doesn't really hurt. Uh, yes, it might hurt because it gets parsed and parsing takes time. But on the other hand, if it's at the lower end of the page, then we have already seen pretty much everything that we need to see anyway. Um, and I agree with you that creating a different code path for bots is inviting fragility because you then have to remember to test that code path very carefully. And you might not necessarily see the issue when it arises unless you very, very carefully monitor your search console and everything uh, around that, um, that aspect. I don't think they're going to win much with it. Uh, and then I come back to my mantra that is don't fix what's not broken. So unless they see a very specific issue and have very good reason to believe that removing the JSON string is going to fix or alleviate that issue, then I would not spend the effort. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Opening the floor for further questions. Don't have questions. That was a, sh a short office hour session. We are like not even ten minutes in. People are leaving already. Someone wants to join the call. That's lovely. They might have thought otherwise. Right. Meanwhile, um, I'll, I'll leave you with some commentary. Uh, I recently checked how things have progressed in the terms of JavaScript rendering from 2018 when I joined Google to today. And I'm really, really happy to see how far we have gotten, uh, how well the evergreen Googlebot has worked um, and is working. And uh, yeah, very, very happy to see that we are seeing fewer JavaScript related issues. Most of the JavaScript related issues that are being reported these days turn out not to be JavaScript related issues or only peripherally uh, linked to JavaScript, such as blocking out um, resources that JavaScript needs to actually build the content. So that's technically not JavaScript related then because it's just blocking the resources. Like, why is my in uh, image not being indexed while you're disallowing us from crawling it, for instance. Um, any further questions while I have you all here? It's a bit of a follow-up on that one, really, yes. on that comment. Um, is that generally because you as Google are getting better at handling JavaScript or education and people are better at building things? Um, and you've seen sort of less issues with things like Ahrefs not being mm -hmm. used and stuff or... I think it's twofold. I think on one hand, uh, the Chrome team does a really great job in educating developers in terms of how to have a, they like to call it the well-lit path so that you basically, you just use the tools out of the box and the tools just happen to make the right decisions for you already, uh, rather than things like frameworks reinventing how links should look like and stuff like that, which was a problem a couple of years ago. Um, and the other thing is that we are also definitely getting better at actually understanding and working with JavaScript. I think the, the leap from Chrome 41 to an evergreen Chrome in the web rendering service was a huge factor because pretty much like the entire JavaScript ecosystem has moved on and we were kind of stuck in time um, until that big leap forward happened. And it's not that we just sat on our hands not doing anything. It was that we were trying to figure out a sustainable uh, strategy for us actually keeping pace with Chrome. And I think we have achieved that, as has been shown through the, the updates throughout the last uh, two years at this point. Um, 
so I, I think it's it's both developers getting better in terms of uh, educating themselves. It's also us educating them. And also the tooling ecosystem kind of becomes better by just making the right choices by default. We kind of see that throughout all the frameworks. So uh, Angular has, has now um, chosen really reasonable defaults. React has been using reasonable defaults for a long time. Uh, Vue.js has recently made good progress towards actually changing away from fragment URLs, for instance. So that's that's pretty cool and very reassuring to me. Cool, it's interesting. Onwards, yeah, and it's not going to go away because I mean the JavaScript ecosystem keeps moving, and I already see spots in WRS where we could invest more should the ecosystem require that investment. Um, so that's going to be interesting to follow and see where we're getting. Yannick is saying, if 85% of my web pages are rendered server-side and 15% are not, will Google render less often the JavaScript version of the website uh, because of the difference with and without JavaScript not being enough? No, no. Um, it turns out that these like heuristics and stuff are pretty shaky, flaky, and hard to debug. So pretty much every page gets rendered. And it doesn't matter if there is much of a difference or not. There are heuristics for pages where we are very sure that it's not going to change overnight, but uh, it's very, very few pages being affected. Any further questions? Anyone else? Tamash or Eric or Adil or, well, Yannick has asked to go to Precious Dito. Yes, I would have a question. Sure. Okay. So it's regarding the pagination mm -hmm. and um, this load more button. Mm -hmm. And as far as I know about pagination, it's it's important that Google has uh, can find a static link on the pages so that Google can go on the page two, page three, and so mm -hmm. on. Yeah. But what, what if we have these load more buttons? So it does mean that uh, on all the pages, we have 10 items. We click on the button. We get another uh, 10 items, mm -hmm. and so on. How sh which is the best solution for uh, uh, that who can crawl all the items on these pages, in, like in the shop? Uh, and if I have a static link to page two, uh, the page two link, if I open it in a new tab, should it show the uh, 20 items? So the till the, the first 10 and the second 10, or should yeah. it just show the second 10 items on the, in the browser? So what's, what's the best solution? Because uh, I've read a couple of articles, but it's, I couldn't find any any working uh, solution mm. which is which was actually approved. It so <laughs> um, <clears throat> it really is a question of what works best in terms of your implementation. But there are a few guidelines that are generally true. So number one is if it's a button, and when I say button, I literally mean a button, not a link. A button. Mm -hmm. If it's a button, you're out of luck. Google the bot does not click on the button, so we are not interacting with that. So that's bad. Uh, the best idea would probably to implement that button as a link uh, that basically goes to like I don't know question mark page two or slash two or whatever like it doesn't matter what the URL looks like the point is it goes to a URL that shows a different batch of content. I would argue I personally would argue best would be or easiest for us would be if the page two link shows just the batch of ten items that are on page two. Because mm -hmm. that would mean that we are seeing definitely unique content. And depending on how much content each of these products has in the list, uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, yeah, well, in the list that you're paginating there, um, you might end up, if you have like lots of content that we have already seen on other pages and then only 10 are different, it might get canonicalized away, which is not what you want. So having unique content per page is definitely a benefit there. And you can use JavaScript to overwrite this behavior for users so that when they click that link, it doesn't behave like a link that actually takes you somewhere else. But actually, you overwrite the behavior of the link to just uh, include more the, the next 10 items on the same page so that you don't have the, the janky move between the different pages if that's what you want to avoid. That's how I would implement it. Is that the best strategy? Maybe. It depends on what you're trying to do, and it depends on what is possible in the platform that you're working with. That's a discussion to have with your developers. But in general, buttons, we don't interact with buttons. Uh, so if that's all you have, then you're out of luck. We are not seeing uh, the other content. 
um, having static links to pages uh, is definitely a better strategy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we were planning to use static links, but uh, yeah, but you have answered the question actually that it's not a problem that if uh, page two for the user, or the, no, let's say page 10 for the user displays 100 items, yeah. and for the Google it's only 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 10 items, so that's, that's not an issue. That's, that's not an issue, exactly. It's not cloaking or anything, it's just a different way of how people can navigate your content. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good, thanks. And one more question regarding this uh, pagination. Mm -hmm. uh, what I've seen on one of my uh, uh, client's website, in, in the in log files actually, that uh, in the last couple of months, uh, Google has started to crawl and on-click uh, URL, uh, which is actually, it, it's, it's a link, it's a href link, but it has only an on-click uh, load page and a URL. And uh, these URLs, uh, were actually uh, crawled by Google. And that was actually, the, my question is that, does Google crawl these on-click events? Because as, as you say that Google is crawling mostly these static URLs and not the on-click and any buttons. And these links yeah. are never ever linked no, to any other no, pages. We don't. Uh, so either someone put it somewhere where we found that, or so we don't click on things, that's true. It is possible, hypothetically, that it's a fake Google bot. It could also be that it's a Google bot running. Uh, so Google it was Google in Google Search is, Console. Also, Google Search Console. Uh, uh, and Search Console, interesting. Yeah, cross the um, In that case, so it definitely right. comes from us. But you would have to share that because I I can't I still don't exactly understand what you mean with this. Uh, okay. But I know that we're not clicking on anything, and clicking does not cause a crawl. So even if we were mm -hmm. to click on something, it wouldn't cause a crawl. Mm -hmm. What is possible that somehow something triggers and we think that's a URL and then we try it out, but I can't think of anything. So that would be interesting to see in more detail, definitely. Um, if you can share one of those URLs that we actually uh, pulled out and how it is um, positioned in the code, that would be interesting. Okay. But in general, we don't click on, on things. No. OK. It's ridiculously Thanks. expensive to click on things. That's why we're not doing that, for, by the way, um, in terms of, of CPU power of the, the WRS, clicking on things is expensive. So that's why we're not doing it. Uh, awesome. We get questions in the chat as well. Adil is asking, if our pages are essentially identical, the only real difference of each page is the event schema for different days, will all pages be crawled and rendered? Probably they will be crawled and rendered. Maybe not all of them will be indexed. Some of them might get canonicalized away, and then eventually no, don't necessarily get crawled again. Um, load all the event schema. I'm not super sure how our policy looks like around event schema. So you have an event that has multiple days, but you have different pages for it. That's interesting. I think it would probably be a good idea so I'm, I'm not 100% if I understand the question correctly. But assuming that you have a multi-day event, you only need one set of event structure data markup to say so, because you can say the start and end times and dates, as far as I'm aware. So I would probably prefer to put that on one page and canonicalize to that page. But your mileage may vary. Uh, that's definitely territory where I would just test uh, and see what happens. I have observed that, Yannick, uh, asking question again, I have observed that automatically loading more products or job postings while scrolling increases the CLS value with each load. From Google's point of view, is a show more button a better solution? Ah, uh, um, I don't know. Uh, the CLS metric is a tricky one that is also being overhauled because it's definitely not perfect. So yeah, tricky question. Uh, I don't think a show more button is necessarily going to be a preferable solution, because I think there is something to be said for uh, infinite scrolling. So if, if the users keep scrolling and things pop in, I think that's not a bad experience per se, even though the CLS metric does make it seem that way. But I'm not sure if look more necessarily changes how that would affect CLS. But again, CLS metric, uh, that's definitely something that we are overhauling because we are not super happy with the way that it works right now. Uh, the, aha, OK, so rather than having 
calendar pages use a monthly view to provide all the data. Um, I don't know. That's a good question. I, I, deal, I would try different versions and see how they perform, because I don't have the answer for that one. Ah, lovely. Thanks, Dave. By the way, Addy, uh, it's Addy's birthday today. So if you want, you can pop over to Twitter and say happy birthday to Addy. Sweet. Anyone else? Any other question? Also, Tamash, if you want to share the URL uh, with us, you can do that in the chat if you want. Or you can also just ping me on Twitter. Um, if you don't want to do that in public, that's fine. I will share it with you later. I, I will just summarize everything then. Awesome. Thank you very much. I have another question. Yes. <laughs> it's regarding uh, crawling. Uh, yes. if, so if you have a website, uh, and the website is a couple of years old, uh, this website has a slash DE and slash EM uh, part. Mm -hmm. uh, they have exactly the same content, I mean, uh, in English and, and German version. Mm -hmm. it's, a, uh, it's a web shop. Uh, mm -hmm. They have approx the same backlink uh, uh, profile. Mm -hmm. But the, one of the one of the folder is crawled three times more as the as, an, uh, as the DA. Mm -hmm. Does it and it's similar to the traffic as well. So that mm -hmm. means that uh, one the DA gets three times more traffic as the AM. Does it also affect the crawling uh, from Google or is it nothing to do with it? No, that's that's separate concerns. Okay. For crawling, we basically just try to figure out how often does content change and um, how often should we or how often we think we should be revisiting that that part. Mm -hmm. So it might just be mm -hmm. that we saw more fluctuation or more change in one of the folders over the other, but it has nothing to do with like how much traffic goes where. It also doesn't say anything about the quality. No, 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 no. It, it was just uh, interesting to see, and mm -hmm. the content changes actually at the same time. So if there's a new product, interesting. Yeah. So. It's, uh, do, you use H, do you use hreflang to tell us about the different versions? Yeah. Yeah, in that case, that makes sense. Maybe we identified that if we crawl the one of the folders, uh, we kind of get the information for the other bits as well. Like if it's it's kind of like okay, so we we all only we already know that basically whenever this changes, this other thing changes. So we don't necessarily have to recheck everything here. We mm -hmm. only have to check the bits and pieces that have changed on the EN side because they are linked mm -hmm. through the href length. So that that's a possible explanation for why you are seeing this uh, disparity between the two folders. Okay, cool. That makes sense. Thank you. You're welcome. And we have a few people who joined recently. So if any of you has questions. We are in the audience part of the Q and A. Getting very quiet. We haven't even reached the thirty-minute mark yet. Hi. Do you Hi. Have a Do you have a question? No. 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 Hi. Hi. Ooh. Doing? Ooh. doing fine. Doing fine. I, 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 I do get an I echo. I do get an echo. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, no worries. No worries. I'm putting on my mic. Uh, just wait. Hello. All right. All right. Yeah, yeah we still have. Yeah, we still have an echo. Okay. Okay. Well, I guess we well, have. Well, I guess we echo. have to listen to the echo. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm gr doing great. Thank you. Ah, now the echo is gone. Lovely. This works. Okay, fantastic. Yeah. Uh, okay. So my question is actually uh, I'm uh, I'm seeing these uh, various blogs uh, saying that uh, the JavaScript SEO is uh, like uh, a new big thing. So I'm not sure about that. So can you uh, can you give us some uh, some brief about it? So what is exactly the JavaScript SEO and how does it work? Interesting question. What is JavaScript SEO? In general, it's nothing different than regular SEO. There's nothing fancy. There's nothing new. There's nothing specific. It's just acknowledging that a bunch of websites these days are using JavaScript to generate the content that they uh, actually show. 
And thus, you need to understand the JavaScript that does that, that builds the page's content uh, in order to understand if there are any SEO problems. For a long time, the general opinion was that JavaScript and SEO don't go together. So if you use JavaScript to build your page, you can't be uh, discoverable through search. That is not the case. That is not true. And people who keep telling that um, are definitely far behind, because that hasn't been true for at least three years at this point. Um, but there's nothing super specific about JavaScript SEO. It's just a different aspect of technical SEO, just like local SEO is an aspect of SEO. Uh, and if you're interested in it, we actually do have a pretty good article that I shall share in the chat real quick. That gives you like an overview of how JavaScript can influence the page and uh, how we are processing it and what you should be aware of. But there's nothing super fancy about it. Understood, understood. Thank awesome. You so much for explaining. You're welcome. All right. Do we have more questions? I have at least eight people in this lovely, yeah, it's eight people and me. Uh, so if anyone has a question, feel free to use the chat or your microphone and or camera. Ah, so good to be back. I have had a bit of a break uh, with these because there was a lot of work to be done around the events and a bunch of uh, other things that are not necessarily super visual. Uh, externally, but I'm really, really happy to be back to the office hours. There are no further questions, and I shall do a little countdown in a moment. Then I would say we wrap this up. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Any questions? No? OK. In that case, thanks, everyone who joined live today. Uh, it has been a blast. Thanks a lot for all your questions. Uh, thanks to everyone who submitted questions through the chat or through YouTube. Um, the next one is going to be in two weeks. Uh, that one will be in a later time slot so that it accommodates different time zones. Um, I'll post on YouTube uh, when the next one will be, and you can ask your questions there or join us live in two weeks. Thanks a lot for joining. Stay safe, stay healthy. Have a fantastic rest of the week. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Uh, thank you as ever, Martin. Bye. Thanks for joining, Dave. And stop the video.